And I'm, I'm very glad to be here uh, with you today to discuss, discuss this issue. Um, an important pillar of government policy is to ensure the horse and greyhound racing industries achieve their maximum potential and in doing so contribute to economic and social development across a wide geographic swath of the country. The horse and greyhound racing industries make a valuable contribution to our economy. It is estimated that the thoroughbred industry has an annual economic impact of 1.9 billion euro with direct and indirect employment of 29,000 people, and the greyhound sector provides an estimated 12,000 people with economic benefit. The thoroughbred industry in particular brings a high level of international investment into Ireland. Government funding, in addition to supporting these key industries, presents an excellent opportunity to yield a high return for its investment, leading to a flow of income right through the economy, thereby providing widespread benefits to our society. The Irish equine breeding and racing industry is extremely competitive, as you will know, at global level. and We are the third biggest producer of thoroughbred foals in the world, and estimates place Ireland only behind the United States in terms of being the biggest seller of bloodstock by public auction globally. Time and again, successive governments have acknowledged the importance of these industries and have supported them through legislation and through policy initiatives. The support provided by public funds through investment in these industries has enabled Ireland to develop a world-class reputation for excellence in horse racing, greyhound racing and in breeding. The current COVID-19 pandemic poses particular challenges for Horse Racing Ireland, Rassia, Conairn and the industries as a whole. The Government Plan on Resilience and Recovery plan for living with COVID-19 does not provide at any of the levels for a return to full commercial operations. This will impact significantly on the finances of HRI and of RCE both this year and up to the end of the time span of the plan in June 2021. It is essential in these circumstances, therefore, that additional COVID-related supports are made available to HRI and to RCE, reflecting costs incurred and changes to the trading environment. These industries receive financial support from the state through the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund under Section 12 of the Horse and Greyhound Racing Act 2001. My department makes payments from the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund to Horse Racing Ireland and to Rassia Con Erin. In the period 2001 to date, a total of 1.36 billion has been paid from the fund to the horse and greyhound racing industries in accordance with the provisions of the Act. The cumulative upper limit on payment from the fund provided for under these relevant regulations has therefore been reached. Exchequer funding providing from the fund is crucial to the survival and continued development of the horse and greyhound industries. In order to give effect to the provisions of Budget 2021, this cumulative upper limit must be increased by regulation. The estimates for my department passed by both houses as part of Budget 2021 include an allocation of €96 million Euro for the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund, and this will be distributed in, in accordance with Section 12.6 of the Grey Horse and Greyhound Racing Act of 2001, which accounts for 80% going to HRI and 20% um, to RCE, or uh, in, in, in monetary totals, just over 76, point, uh, 76 million to HRI and 19.2 uh, million to, to um, RCE. In order to allow my department to provide the monies allocated in Budget 2021, it is necessary to comply with the technical requirement under sec Section 12, subsection 13 of the Horse and Greyhound Act to increase the cumulative limit on the amount payable from the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund by €96 million Euro to some €1.46 um, billion. This is achieved by way of the regulations submitted to this House today. The aggregate limit on the Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund has been increased in this manner in 2004 and in 2009 to 2020 inclusive. With regard to the horse racing industry, Cahirla, the 2017 Deloitte report into the economic impact of Irish breeding and racing, commissioned by HRI, indicates that the total direct and stimulated expenditure of the Irish breeding and racing industry is estimated at €1.84 billion in 2016. In addition, it is estimated that there are 15,200 jobs at the core of the racing and breeding industry or in directly related industries. Horse racing generates a very significant return to the rural economy in Ireland and a positive international profile for our country. Of course, behind all the facts and figures are thousands of men and women who directly and indirectly make the Irish racing and breeding industry 
what it is today. The 2019 annual report for HRI indicated another successful year for Irish racing and breeding industries. The focus on ownership leads to a further increase in the number of horses in training and more horses competing. There was also an increase of over 3% in attendance figures for 2019 and an increased demand for Irish horses at the sales, which was welcome given the, uh, in particular the uncertainty um, as, as a result of Brexit. As proven in 2020, I'll bet mostly behind closed doors due to COVID, Irish owners, trainers, jockeys and horses are setting high standards globally and their stellar achievements and enduring influence underscore Ireland's international prominence. The Irish equine breeding and racing industry is extremely competitive at a global level, despite other major racing nations having much larger populations and much larger economies. It is worth noting that government funding, in addition to supporting this key industry, also presents an excellent opportunity to yield a high return for its investment, leading to a flow of income right throughout the economy. Support for certain strategic industries is important for future economic growth and can provide widespread benefits to society as well as for the wider economy. HRI has engaged extensively with my department and other key stakeholders in relation to the significant risks to the industry as a result of COVID-19, and they have reviewed a number of scenarios and financial forecasts that have taken appropriate measures um, to mitigate the financial impact to the organisation and to the wider industry. The significant threat posed by Brexit to the current ease of movement of horses between Britain and France, in addition to the global nature of major breeding operations, illustrate that while Ireland arguably now has leadership position within Europe, our preeminence is not guaranteed. With regard to the greyhound racing industry, here, look, according to the 2017 Power Report, the industry provides support and considerable employment both directly and indirectly in the economy. It is estimated in 2016 it supported uh, five, over 5,000 full-time and part-time jobs in the economy. In addition, there are over 7,000 active greyhound owners. The total number of people deriving economic benefit from the sector is estimated at 12, over 12,371. The funding being provided to the greyhound si racing sector helps sustain a long-standing tradition as the industry is part of the social fabric of our country. This funding underpins economic activity in what are, in many instances, less affluent regions of the country. The future of the industry is dependent on a strong governance platform and on the industry having the highest standards of integrity and welfare founded on a strong regulatory system. Provisions on the, of the Greyhound Racing Act 2019, which came into effect in May of last year, will make a real difference. This legislation strengthens the legal basis for the industry with a view to fortifying the integrity of the greyhound racing sector and improving provision for greyhound traceability. The new act will improve the governance of Rassia Con Erin, strengthen regulatory, regulatory controls in the industry, modernise sanctions and improve integrity within the sector. It provides the industry with real tools with which it can affect fundamental change and reform. The sections of the Act commenced on the 1st of October 2020 signal a new era for the greyhound racing sector. They facilitate the Board in, fo in focusing on its priority objective, which is achieving the highest standards of care and welfare of greyhounds. The Greyhound Racing Act of 2019, when fully implemented, will enable Rassiac Con Erin to ensure the important heritage associated with greyhound racing in Ireland can continue under the appropriate rules and regulations. The greyhound industry is predominantly a rural industry with a strong urban support base. The COVID-19 crisis has, similar to other sectors of the economy, resulted in a collapse of commercial activity in greyhound racing and significant reduction of activity generally. Recovery of the industry will require ongoing support to aid restoration of normal levels of activity and to adequately manage the welfare issues that arise. Betting tax Cahirlock was increased from 1% to 2% in Budget 2019 and now contributes um, €95 million Euro to the Exchequer as of 2019 figures. Given the wide geographic industry of these two industries, they are fundamental to the achievement of a more balanced regional economic growth. Relieving the burden on our major, ur our major urban centres and nurturing rural economies is a key priority for the Government. In this context, these industries should be given recognition for the considerable contribution that they make to rural economic activity and employment. 
The welfare of horses and of greyhounds is the cornerstone of both industries, and I am assured that HRI and RCE are striving to ensure the highest standards for the sport and its participants on and away from the race course. The Horse and Greyhound Racing Fund has played a key role in providing this investment and has been instrumental in shaping the destiny of these industries. Brexit poses an array of substantial threats to the Irish economy, and coupled with the fact that we are a small, open economy naturally prone to volatility, it is difficult to predict what the future holds. It is therefore crucial that we support these important industries that are facing the perils of COVID and indeed Brexit as we enter into 2021. Accordingly, Cahirlik, I am seeking your support to ensure that Horse Racing Ireland and Rassia Con Éireann receive the funding provided for in Budget 2021 and that the very important role played by these industries and the economic activity generated by them are sustained into the future. I commend the regulation to the House and I look forward to discussing any matters arising. Thank you, Cahirla. Um, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, I'd like to thank everyone who contributed to the, the debate um, in the House this afternoon. I think it certainly was, it, it was very important that the debate was had. It's important that there's oversight in terms of uh, all the spending we do, and, and it's important that there's oversight in relation to the spending of the uh, Horse and Greyhound Fund. Um, and certainly, um, between um, yesterday, Tuesday, and next Tuesday, I will have appeared um, on four occasions in one week uh, between the Houses of Iraq to, to discuss the issue of the Horse and Greyhound Fund. I know um, Senator Ruan earlier mentioned that it wasn't going to be discussed at all. It, it will be next Tuesday. Um, it was discussed in the Agriculture Committee um, at length yesterday. Uh, it was discussed um, in the Dáil this morning as part of a private member's motion here in the Shannon today and in the Dáil next Tuesday. So I certainly think it, uh, it, couldn't, it couldn't be accused of not being properly uh, uh, teased out. Um, of course, technically, it is a requirement every year um, that we come, forward, we come to actually seek the approval of both houses in relation to uh, the increase and in additional allocations under this fund. And I think uh, I outlined in my opening statement, as many members did here in the chamber today as well, the, uh, the value of both um, the horse. Uh, the horse racing industry and the greyhound industry uh, to the country, to those who participate in it, and to the economies and to employment. And that it's important that, they, that we as a, a government do support those economic activities and also uh, recognise their important part in terms of rural traditions and their importance to, 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 the, to uh, uh, rural heritage as well as indeed um, to, to, to urban heritage. And there's, there's a strong, particularly in, in the greyhound sector, a strong urban, ur, urban heritage and, and participation in, in that industry and, and sport as well. Um, I know from many of the contributions made, the, uh, the importance is being attached to welfare, and I absolutely concur with that. It is, it is crucial. I know both uh, HRI and Rassia Con Aaron um, also are very clear in terms of ensuring that the highest of welfare measures are, uh, are implemented, and that that continues to improve. Uh, there's been particular um, comment in relation to the greyhound sector in recent years, and Rassia Con Aaron, it's something that they have taken very seriously, and that they're, they are committing a minimum of 10% of the funding they receive towards uh, towards uh, continuing to increase the animal welfare measures and, and supports that are in place. I know it's being referred to by many of the contributions in relation to the traceability system that's currently being put in place. That's really, really important. And some of the, some of the funding is going towards that. And also the rehoming support and the care homes. And that the funding will continue that in the year ahead. And funding is dependent. State funding is dependent on those high standards um, uh, be, being followed and being, being, being implemented. So uh, I do ask for the support of the House for, for this funding. Obviously, the increase is particularly uh, related to COVID, the fact that in both the industries, they haven't been able to, ha ha to, for much of the year, be able to race um, or indeed have had to do racing behind closed doors, losing lots of, their, lots of revenue as a result of that. So I know there's, there's not, you know, not unanimous support for that. Some are clearly not in favour of spending public funds in this regard. Many, uh, I think a majority would be and do recognise the value of it and the importance of it. Um, some, I think, uh, also were very much in the middle and they, 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 they want to do both sides of the road. And I suppose the uh, benefit of having to appear in the Iraq for on four occasions over the course of, um, of a week is that you get to see, uh, even within the same parties, and I note Sinn Féin in particular here, the various different uh, approaches depending on which member you're talking to. And obviously, I think we've, we've seen over the last two or three years that, that the, their, view, their view on this issue very much depends on who they are talking to as well. Um, but I, I do know in 2016, 17 and 18, the party did oppose 
um, the Cohorse and Greyhound Racing Fund. I noted from last year, um, uh, Deputy Stanley at that, is, that, at that stage said, shame, after the debate, he said, shame on Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and Labour for passing, passing the motion and the obscene levels of funding last year. And I, I know when you're, you're, yeah, so I know I see in your motion in front of the doll today from your spokesperson this year, Deputy Carthy, one year on, he's very much in favour of the level of funding that was passed last year, but he just doesn't want the increases there this year. But so we're seeing, we're seeing that you're very much in favour of the industry, but you're just one year behind the curve um, on that regard. So clearly today in your motion, you're supporting what you said was obscene last year and what you called shameful to other parties last year. So that's now your position this year. So we look forward to seeing, we look forward to seeing what your position is next year or maybe even next week. So I do. I do, I do commend the motion to the House. Uh, thank you.